subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon. I've been asked to comment about uh, the Supreme Court directions with respect to conducting judicial proceedings through video conferencing. Let me at the very beginning confess that I'm not a great fan of video conferencing. As a criminal lawyer, I believe that the distance between the litigant and the court will only increase if uh, these proceedings become uh, the new norm. I completely understand that these are unprecedented times and in unprecedented times you cannot have a court in permanent lockdown. Important matters have to be taken up periodically and if this is the only medium then we should certainly uh, take this on. However, to say or to suggest that this is how we will conduct proceedings in the future is something I am very, uh, which something I find very problematic. As a criminal lawyer, I believe that a litigant or an accused must always be present in court. After all, his rights and liberties are affected. I believe there are valuable instructions that must be passed on between him and his client and his lawyer. Uh, without those instructions, a trial cannot be properly conducted. Uh, legal interviews are a must. Again, that's not possible. Uh, also, the few times that I've appeared uh, in court through video conferencing in the last couple of weeks, I have come away feeling very dissatisfied by the, by the whole experience. Uh, one genuinely gets the impression that one is not able to put forward all of one's points. And uh, it's, it's very plastic in, in, in the way it's conducted. There is no emotion. Uh, it's, uh, you know, so much of the nuance is lost, uh, which is so critical to arguing uh, a case. Um, so while this might work for a short period of time, I don't think it can have universal application later on. For example, in a trial court, how is a trial court supposed to conduct evidence through video conferencing? A prosecutor has to exhibit case properties, a prosecutor has to, uh, has to record evidence of a witness who's standing in front of him, a prosecutor has to confront the witness with documents and, uh, and exhibits, likewise the defense counsel has to cross-examine the witness by showing him documents, showing him exhibits. Uh, all of this is not possible uh, if, if everything is done remotely. Final arguments, another area of deep concern, uh, because it requires uh, marshalling of evidence, it requires uh, reference to statutes, reference to sections, reference to various parts of a bulky paper book, um, re reference to the original court record. Again, a, a difficult process if you have to do this through video conferencing. As a criminal lawyer, when I'm appearing for people who, whose lives and liberties uh, have, been, um, have been taken away, whose liberties have been taken away, um, there is a certain amount of perseverance and persistence in the manner in which we argue. Uh, a lot of passion. Uh, all of that is lost in video conferencing proceedings. I think the conclusion is somewhat foregone because uh, you sit in your neat little corners, you wait for the other person to respond, uh, and then the court passes a judgment uh, or an order. Uh, the, the scope for a rebuttal and a vehement rebuttal, uh, an on-the-spot rebuttal, all of that is limited through this medium. Uh, I therefore believe that uh, the Supreme Court, uh, when it passed its directions for video conferencing, obviously did it because uh, of the times that we are uh, living in at the moment. Uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't agree with some of the senior lawyers who've spoken before me uh, who say that this is really the medium of the future and this is how we will be conducting court proceedings in the future. I disagree with that completely and I hope that doesn't happen. Um, also remember, India is many Indias. Go a hundred kilometers from Delhi and look at a court and look at the complete lack of infrastructure in that court. You are expecting that judge uh, to now uh, 
uh, familiarize himself with, uh, with a medium that he has never worked with uh, in his entire life. Lawyers there have not worked with this medium in their lives. Um, it's, it's therefore, uh, it appears to me that this, this exercise is more a metrocentric exercise where the bigger cities might be able to do it. Uh, but uh, it will not and cannot have a pan-India application. Internet facilities are virtually non-existent in, in large parts of our country, even today. Uh, m very often, uh, even in Delhi, when, uh, when video conferencing is set up, uh, we are then told that there is some technical uh, problem and that we have to come back half an hour later. Uh, so these are problems which are not going to change. You are looking at a very limited load of cases which you can do through video conferencing. I have no problems if those are done, but to uh, somehow elevate it to the status of a permanent way in which we conduct court proceedings in the future, I'm sorry, that's, that's, I hope that never happens. It should not happen in the trial court. I hope it doesn't happen in the first appellate court. It might work. Uh, to some extent in the Supreme Court.